Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to review the Ishin Wizard X220S. First of all I would like to thank Banggood for sending me this product for a review. Inside the box we get in tons of propellers, the instruction manual which is not so great and Ishin did a much better job with, with the included manual that included for example in the Ishin Lizard 95. We also get in the run cam tray with a stand, just joking we get in only the mount, it's compatible with a run cam tray or a GoPro session. We get in also 4 landing pads, some extra screws and 4 nuts for the propellers, 2 for the clockwise motors and 2 for the counterclockwise motors, 1 RHCP pagoda antenna, some 10 cm zip ties, two small carbon wrenches and the most important the quadcopter itself and I must give it to Ishin they did a pretty nice job with the design if you like purple if purple is not the, your color it might be a problem for you I've got the almost ready to fly version which means it didn't come with any receiver so I would have to supply my own plus it didn't come with a battery as well on the front of the quadcopter we have this 1190 HS 800 TVL CCD camera. You can see it's also purple like the motors and standoffs. The motors are 2206, 2300 kV motors. I've got the limited edition since Ishin did a mistake and you can see this sticker is reversed. You can see, so it's 2300 kV made in China and 2206 purple as well. On the back of the quadcopter we have this LED board with a built-in buzzer and we've got some LED indicators also on the bottom of the quadcopter. The motors are mounted on this rubber damping plate and Banggood recommend to fasten the screws before taking it for a flight because as you can see they are not well secured. So just do yourself a favor and go through all the screws and just fasten them up. The weight of the quadcopter without the propellers and the antenna is 340 grams. It's almost the same weight as the Ishin Racers 250 Pro, but you can see these quadcopters side by side and you can actually tell that this one looks much more professional and probably it's gonna be much more durable than the Pro 250. I've flown the 250, I wasn't very excited about it. Hopefully the Wizard X220S will fly much, much better. Let's remove the top port and see what we've got under it. On the top we have the transmitter with a selectable transmission power. You can choose between 25, 200 and 600 milliwatts. Over here we have the button that enables you to select the band channel and the output strength. And it is accessible from the top, however, the strap is on the way, so we'll have to remove the front one in order to access this button. Underneath the VTX, we have the Omnibus F4 flight controller, which comes already pre flashed with Beta Flight. And under the flight controller, we have a 30 ampere 4 in 1 ESC controller that supports D Shot 600. And by the way, this quadcopter can handle a 5S battery. I don't have one unfortunately in order to test it out, so I'm going to use a 4S one on my test flight. On the back of the quadcopter we have this RPSMA female connector, so be careful, do not power on the quadcopter without an antenna on because you're going to burn the transmitter. So let's quickly connect an antenna and show you the settings of the VTX. Configuring the VTX is quite simple, so once you connect the battery, you can see the status of the VTX. Right now it's on channel 1, band A and three hyphens are chosen which means it's 600 milliwatt. In order to change it, short pressing the button will change the channel. Long pressing it will change between A, B, E, F, R, U, O, L and H which means we have nine bands total of 72 channels and if we long press it again we can change the output rank one hyphen 25 milliwatt two hyphens are 200 milliwatts and three hyphens are 600 milliwatts. Then the settings are saved. Right now we are on channel six, band H and three hyphens are chosen. You can use this table in order to set your favorite band. I'm going to set it up on F7, which means I will need to put the band F and channel seven. So now it's on channel seven. Now it's on F. I'm going to leave it on 600 milliwatts for the test. 
By the way, there is a built-in OSD in this quadcopter and it supports Betaflight OSD, so you can configure all the OSD configuration through the Betaflight configurator. In order to secure the IFL connector of the pigtail, you should already put this glue over here, which I think is great because if this is going to connect, be disconnected on a crash, it can burn your transmitter. However, I can see that it's not well secured, so what I recommend to do is to put some of this silicone glue in order to make sure it will be properly secured. Now I have to let it dry for a few minutes and now I think it's going to be on a better state. If you've got the almost ready to fly version like me, you will have to supply your own receiver. Now this wire already comes exposed like that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to connect my FR Sky receiver. This is the SBUS wire, five volt and ground. So I'm just going to solder it up and then bind it to my Taranis. Binding this receiver is done by simply connecting the battery to the quadcopter while pressing the bind button. You have to make sure that you chose the right mode. There is a PPM mode and SBUS, so you have to solder the correct paths. Then put the Taranis on D8 mode, channels one to eight, hit bind, and then this receiver will be bound to your transmitter. However, I do not recommend using this receiver. This is the only one to have spare at the moment. That's why I'm using it because with this one, you're not gonna get any RSSI feedback. So I should, I suggest you should use an XSR or an X4R receiver if you're using a Taranis. And if you're using FlySky, probably a 8S will probably going to be the best choice for you. The angle of the camera can be set by just loosening these two screws on the side of the camera. And you have also this angle meter that enables you to sail up between, let's say about 70 degrees to zero degrees, which is parallel to the ground. I'm going to set it up on about 50 degrees or something like that. You just need to fasten these screws while holding the camera. Otherwise it's going to move. And now the camera is well secured. On the right side, we have this protective case for the USB port, which means in order to configure it on clean flight or beta flight, you won't have to disassemble the top part. You can just connect this over here. And the SD slot is also accessible from the outside. If you would like to connect the Runcom tree mount, I think the easiest way would be just to use a zip tie. Just to be on the safe side, I actually recommend you to use two of those. You will need to cut the zip ties every time you will need to remove the camera mount, but I think that it's not so bad. And I think that it is well secured. Probably it is the easiest way to secure the camera mount. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to go through the settings of Betaflight, make sure that everything is configured okay, and take it for a test flight. In the next week or so, I'm going to add the Runcom split to the Ishin Wizard 220S. It's probably going to be fun and I'm looking forward to doing so. So stay tuned and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed to watch this process. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about it, this quadcopter, feel free to ask it in the comment section below and I'll see you on my next videos.